Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we are going to be taking a look at what might very well be one of the oddest, if not the oddest, front flipper slash button lock EDC I have come across. And what this is is none other than the Trevisa Japanese-inspired Higanakami Razor. Now, before we go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length coming in at 7.16 inches, a blade length coming in at 3.2 inches, and a blade thickness at 110 thousandths. Blade material on this guy is 10CR15 MOV which with the HRC coming in at 59 to 61. We have a Warncliffe style blade with a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 3.97 inches and a handle thickness at 525 thousandths. Handle material on this guy is green micarta and we have a button lock locking mechanism. I, I do believe this comes in, I think carbon fiber and maybe one other option. Um, but obviously, for sure, green micarta. micarta. Um, a user of a right or left hand tip-up carry, a weight coming in at a rather reasonable 2.75 ounces, and a price of $52.99, which really isn't that bad. Um, I don't really have any real gripes with the price, um, especially for the overall offering you have here. We'll talk more about this, but Trevisa continues to impress me. I have some questions around this for a, a couple things, but overall, um, it's quite impressive. And this here is the Civivi Elementum, because you know we gotta do some size comparisons. And of course, right here, we also have one of the premium CGRB Pyrites. Just to note, the, the perfect Pyrite project is now on CGRB's website and no longer on Kickstarter. So be sure to hop over to CGRB's website and uh, check out the offerings of all the perfect Pyrites. And as you can see, uh, this Japanese-inspired Higanakami razor actually lines up very well with that perfect pyrite. The pyrite just has a little inch on it, and it's a not an inch, but just a little smidgen of length, and it's just a hair longer than the Elementum. So pretty good size comparisons there. And let's let's talk about this thing because it's very different. It's I, I like it. There's a lot of things I really like about it. A lot of it does have to do with the blade, and a lot of it has to do with this button lock action. But let's talk about the blade first, because it's a pretty good looking blade. It's, it's a very clean, simple design, mega slicey blade tip up here. Blade in general is mega slicey. We have a behind the edge reading on this guy of about 11 and a half thousandths behind the edge. So we are very thin, very slicey, full flat grind. And uh, this tip here, if I can get it into focus, look at that. That is, uh, that's a little laser beam of a tip there. This tip will do some really good draw cuts, any type of just little uh, quick cuts you need. This is a very effective blade, and it really is a really nice EDC blade. Um, I really love the extremely minimal blade branding. All you get is this 10CR right there on the blade, and that's it. Everything else is totally clean. It's almost completely sterile, so I really like that. And I love this plunge grind here. Plunge grind and sharpening choil. Very good job on that. I mean, check that thing out. That is crazy crazy good nice and thin uh in that plunge and a nice choil to uh have a really good amount of sharpening life so really really nice blade in general we also have kind of a crowned edge up here kind of throwing it back to uh kind of an italian style manufacturing you know you see that a lot in the italian knives really nice to see that crown spine there and uh yeah just a very very nice blade in general uh, going into the handle, uh, so there is actually this this part of the blade here. This is really its own subject, so we're going to wait and talk about that when we get to the action. 
Uh, but let's talk about the handle because it's actually, obviously it's very neutral due to the shape, but most importantly, there's nothing that annoys me. Uh, the micarta feels like micarta. It doesn't feel plasticky or cheap. Um, it doesn't have quite the best yeah, grainy finish you look for in micarta. This really reminds me a lot of like the QSP and even some of the Civivi micarta. Um, so it's not bad. It's just like, it's not Kaiser micarta, I guess is what I'm getting at because uh, Kaiser micarta is just it's it's just a little different. It's, it's a little better. Um, but overall, it is still uh, very acceptable and uh, pretty good micarta. Um, one aspect of the handle that I really like that I'm kind of torn about is this flipper tab because it actually does fit in very well right here. It provides some great jimping. And it really does feel good in hand. There's no hot spots. It fits just right in my mitt. And it just feels really good. You got some couple lines grooved in on the micarta for looks. That's good. Uh, the deep carry clip is nothing special. Very, very general clip. You've probably seen this on a bunch of other knives. But it, it, it works. No issue with it. And I believe that is, yeah, it's stone wash, So it's not all satin. So it pairs really well with the blade. So I really don't have any knocks on the handle. And another thing that I really like about this handle is the overall solidity of it. You know, it, it, it's funny because a lot of times people want really simple handles or they want like seamless construction, not a lot of things going into the knife. But it's amazing what adding just an extra backspacer in a handle will do for a handle. How much extra strength that one little backspacer adds. If you didn't have that backspacer there, I guarantee you there'd be a noticeable flex in the handle. But that makes a huge difference. Um, a lot of knives just have like two-piece uh, two construction to where there's just... Um, a screw and a spacer back here, and then they use the pivot as the other brace at the top, and then there's nothing in the middle. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I have knives like that that I love, but I really, really love to see that extra backspacer back there because it really does give it that extra bit of strength and sturdiness that I really look for, that I really appreciate in all my knives. Now, let's get in to the action. The action is actually fantastic the problem is kind of the problem not a huge problem and it depends how you want to deploy this blade um this front flipper tab here i get what they were trying to do this is probably has a lot to do um with the japanese inspiration of the higanakami i'm probably pronouncing that wrong i apologize if i am but the higanakami razor style obviously i'm assuming this is kind of like an old school razor that you would flip out and you know maybe shave with or something like that or maybe it was an old school japanese edc type knife um this at the end of the day and i am torn about saying this but at the end of the day this front flipper tab is just too long now it is 100 percent easily reach around to prove this is one of the better reach arounds i've done on knives recently like it's very very easy very effortless i could do this to deploy the blade all the time it's very very satisfying very good and trevisa i'm telling you guys if you haven't checked trevisa out they make very very impressive button locks and what i mean by that there's what, what really makes an impressive button lock for me is getting the back here, this this area where the plunge works with the blade and how it reacts with each other to mimic a detent. The, the stronger of a detent on a button lock there is, in my opinion, the better the button lock action is. And this one, if you listen, has a very, very good detent-like build into the operations of this knife. Um, you really have to break that release, break break the, the detent. It, maybe it's not a true detent. Maybe it is technically some style of a detent, but it's not like a detent ball. But you, you, there, you know that the point you need to break to deploy the blade. And it's very, very good on this. It makes for a very enjoyable deployment. And I tell you what, the action on these button locks coming out of Trevisa are just fantastic. Um, super, super smooth. I'm not kidding you guys. These button locks are right up there with the Kaisers and the Civivis. And like I said, this one here that I reviewed a while back from Trevisa, this is 
absolutely incredible. Now, I did notice that this does, the blade, it, it actually does hit the, um, the back spacer here just just a tad it's hard to focus in with my camera on my phone but if you look in there there is a very very small amount where the blade just touches the back spacer not the end of the world it's not it's not hurting the edge to me i'm not having any performance issues so it's not like driving me crazy um but you don't have that here obviously this does not come close to touching any of the back spacers so zero issue there the only real issue is kind of this front flipper tab and this is my thought here um, I'm going to do something. I'm going to chop it off down to here. Just take a Dremel and I'm going to chop it off to here. Now, this is just me, so it'll still be sticking out considerably. But I do find myself, like when I go to front flip this, unless you're very, very conscious to make sure that your hand is all the way back to where that tab won't hit it, there is a pretty good portion that can hit your hit your finger like that and you get like that and obviously that's not going to open you're just going to pinch your finger so to avoid that i am going to chop this down one two notches to right here and then just kind of touch it up with the dremel and i think it's going to be perfect do you absolutely have to do that no you don't you you really don't that's a personal preference i wouldn't call it a real issue with the knife it just bothers me a little too much to leave it like that. I think some people would be okay with it and other people won't. Um, some people may like the way this look. It does kind of have that old school, like, you know, sh razor shaving type of look. I would just rather see that front flipper tab shortened a couple notches to where it's only looking like that, which is still plenty big enough and all you need uh, to deploy this blade. Now, the problem with that will be was when I take this and this notch off, instead of having all this space, I'm really only going to have that much space to put my thumb. So I don't know if I'm gonna feel the back end of this at all to where it's gonna kind of feel like a hot spot. I personally don't think it is. It's gonna be close, but I'm willing to take that risk. One, because it's a very affordable knife at $52.99, um, and I do truly think it'll make the knife a little better. Um, but in all honesty, that's the only thing you could do to make this knife better because action is on point, aesthetics are very nice, blade is super slicey, handle and ergos are good. Overall, this is a very nice knife. A little quirky with that front flipper tab, but a detent and a button lock that is dialed in, aesthetics that are good and unique, and overall, it is a knife that I would recommend because it it, it interests me and it is, it, it's a fun knife. It's a kind of a clean, somewhat like casual slash classy piece. It, it's cool. It's really cool. I would recommend checking it out. I don't know how many are left, um, but definitely worth looking into if it's something that floats your boat. So that's that guys. Let me know what you think of this. Really hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day and until the next one, I'm out.